Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Many of you have been to the Sight and Sound Theater in Branson, Missouri. I know that because every time you come back from Branson, you tell me that you were there and the epic story that you saw while you were in Branson. In fact, just last night after worship, someone came to me and said, we were there just 11 days ago to see a show at the Sight and Sound Theater. Or maybe you've been to the original Sight and Sound Theater in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was in that Pennsylvania theater that my family and I were first treated to the telling of these epic Bible stories on a 270-degree stage. It was the story of Ruth. And since then, they built that theater in Branson, a sister theater, and we've seen shows down there, Jonah, Noah. Ten days ago, we saw the story of Samson. If you have taken careful note of all of the biblical stories I have mentioned thus far, they are all Old Testament stories. It is clear from the mission statement of Sight and Sound Theaters, it is their intention to bring biblical stories to life from a Christian worldview. Maybe you notice a problem there. Jesus Christ was not born any time even near when all of these stories were happening in the Old Testament. So it is at the end of each of the telling of these epic tales that the narrator comes out onto the stage as the narrator has been telling parts of the story through the two and a half, three hours and moves the story forward, sometimes thousands of years, certainly hundreds of years. For instance, Samson lived about a thousand years before Christ. The narrator says, and Samson lived with weaknesses, but it was because of the grace of God that he was able to conquer those weaknesses and literally perform his acts of strength for his God. Then he looks at the thousand, maybe two thousand people who are in that large theater And he says, you all are weak, but you are made strong because of one who went to the cross for you. And on a three-story mountain on stage is projected a picture of Jesus on the cross. Narrator looks at us all again and says, and it is because of this one that you are able to overcome your weakness and live in victory with Christ. And the picture changes to a picture of a glowing, glorious Jesus having conquered death and the grave. All the while, Sight and Sound Theater just praying that they are touching some hearts in that large audience that we all might live in the grace and love of Jesus. Now, there are those who criticize Sight and Sound Theater for projecting Jesus back into the telling of Old Testament stories. In fact, reading the entire Bible with glasses that have Jesus lenses on them. But if that's what Sight and Sound Theater is doing, they are not unique. We have done it ourselves in the reading of today's lesson from Hebrews. Instead of lifting up the sight and sound Old Testament heroes, Ruth and Samson and Noah and Jonah, our Old Testament lesson lifts up Old Testament giants such as Abel and Enoch and Noah again and Abraham. And they are all lifted up for one reason. They are lifted up for their faith. Now, their faith is very important to their coming to the story, and as you participated in the reading, surely you notice two words slipping from your lips over and over again, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith, 
Abel could offer his sacrifice. By, by faith, Enoch was taken up into heaven, not having tasted earthly death. By faith, Noah was able to build an ark. By faith, Abraham went when God said go. By faith, Abraham stopped when God said stop. By faith, Abraham was able to father a child even though he and his wife Sarah were dried up old prunes. Now, those stories in and of themselves would be a tremendous set of stories. But those stories beg a question. By faith. Faith in what? Faith for what? Faith is never the objective. Faith is a vehicle to the objective. And it is clear that all of the objectives listed in Hebrews today are objectives of the future. That they were not fulfilled in the time of those Old Testament heroes. In fact, Hebrews writes, all of these died without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. One could say that Ruth and Samson Noah and Abraham never really knew what God, what God had in mind through Jesus Christ. But they stood in the line of Jesus Christ and knew that God would be faithful and do something spectacular for his people. The truth is we are in exactly the same circumstance. We have been promised many things by God. We have been promised the world. We've, we've been promised an eternity with Jesus Christ and with those we love. But there is not one person here for whom that promise has been fulfilled. Instead, like those heroes of the Old Testament, we are given faith through grace that we might believe in those promises that will come to us, things not yet seen. There are some who ridicule people of faith for believing in promises from God. Boaz warned his people not to ridicule or harm Ruth as she gleaned from the fields the leftovers so that she and her mother-in-law would not die. People ridiculed Noah for building this big boat on dry land a long ways from any water that could float the boat. People, people ridiculed Samson for his weakness after Delilah cut off his hair. But Ruth and Noah and Samson were able to go beyond any ridicule and faithfully serve their God. It is disheartening to read what anonymous people are willing to write on the internet under stories of faith in the comment sections of newspapers. It is, it is a wonder where that incivility, even hate for faith and the people of faith come from. Well, they ridiculed Jesus too. Spit on him, called him names, strung him up on a cross, and yet that very human Jesus believed the promise. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And so we are called to believe in those same promises, even if those promises will not come true in our lives here on this earth. Very much like those Old Testament heroes, we can say that we are strangers, aliens on this earth, awaiting the homeland that God is preparing for us. And there's not one person here who will be able to take a picture of that homeland and put it on your Instagram account. No one is going to send a text note back to family about this, this place for which God alone is the architect. It is a home for which we await in faith, unseen. 
And we believe all of this because we have a good and faithful God. We believe it because of all the things God has done for us. In the children's word, my grandson was willing to fall backwards even though he did not know for sure that I was there. But he was willing to do that because over time I have proved myself faithful to him and I will not let him fall. The reason you love the people you do is not because you are such a loving person. It is because those people have proved themselves to you and have done things that help you know they are lovable. You love God. You believe God. You trust and have faith in God. Not because of what you have done, but because of what God has done for you. And that's something to celebrate today and every day. Amen. Hymn 598, please rise.